world's biggest economy is fighting a four-decade high inflation. In an aggressive drive to tame the surge, the U.S. Federal Reserve has raised its key interest rate by 75 basis points. It is the biggest hike in nearly three decades. With a 0.75% hike, the benchmark short-term rate is now at a range of 1.5 to 1.75%. The hike affects many consumer and business loans. The inflation, with inflation having reached a four-decade high of 8.6%, the central bank is ramping up its drive to slow growth. U.S. inflation has been worsened by Russia's war against Ukraine and its effects on energy prices. Shortages of oil, gasoline and food are also propelling the inflation in the country. The U.S. central bank is under intense pressure to curb soaring gas and food prices. The decision to impose a rate hike as large as this is an acknowledgement that Fed is struggling to curb the pace and persistence of inflation. Listen in to Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to what he had to say. Clearly, today's 75 basis point increase is an unusually large one, and I do not expect moves of this size to be common. From the perspective of today, either a 50 basis point or a 75 basis point increase seems most likely at our next meeting. We will, however, make our decisions meeting by meeting and will continue to, to communicate our thinking as clearly as we can. Our overarching focus is using our tools to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal and to keep longer-term inflation expectations well anchored. The U.S. Central Bank has flagged more rate hikes. The benchmark interest rate could see another 0.75 percentage point hike in July. Officials projected the rate would increase to 3.4% by the end of this year itself and to 3.8% in the year 2023. The U.S. Central Bank chair stressed that they are determined to slow inflation but not by derailing the American economy. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. We're not trying to reduce, induce a recession now. Let's be clear about that. We're trying to achieve 2% uh, inflation consistent with a strong labor market. That's, that's what we're trying to do. From the perspective of today, either a 50 basis point or a 75 basis point increase seems most likely at our next meeting. Meanwhile, a downgrade to the Fed's economic outlook accompanied the tightening of monetary policy. The U.S. Central Bank has projected a slowing economy and rising unemployment in the months to come. The U.S. economy is seen slowing to a 1.7% rate of growth this year. The forecast was at 2.8% earlier. Unemployment projected to rise to 3.7% by the end of this year itself and continuing to rise to 4.1% through the year 2024. Following the release of the statement and economic projections, investors cheered the Federal Reserve's decision. Wall Street closed sharply higher. Government bond yields and the dollar retreated from multi-year highs. And for more on this, our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us this report from New York on the tightened monetary policy listening. In a bid to stop a runaway train to a possible recession, the Fed approved its largest interest rate hike in almost 40 years as it races to slow the economy with an inflation at a 40-year high. The Fed wants to cool off the labor market without increasing unemployment, something economists say is easier said than done. However, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is optimistic, saying it's possible in a post-pandemic economy. Here in the United States, today's news means anyone who has a home mortgage, a car payment, or even a credit card will be affected. The news also comes at a time when Americans And more on this, joining us live from Miami is John A. Quelch, who is the Dean of the Herbert Business School at the University of Miami. Welcome to the broadcast, John. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is the biggest hike in the interest rate in the United States since 1994. My first question to you is that what will be the immediate and long-term impact of this on American consumers? Well, American consumers are already uh, nervous about inflation. And 
uh, this uh, move by the Federal Reserve is intended to uh, kind of calm the waters uh, while at the same time uh, ensuring that the uh, economy is not going to fall into recession. So the Federal Reserve has to draw a very fine distinction between, on the one hand, uh, making sure that uh, inflation is brought under control, but doing so in a gradual and systematic way uh, that does not risk putting the economy into recession. Uh, consumers in the U.S. Uh, really fall into two groups. Uh, one group is the group that lives paycheck to paycheck. They have been suffering incredibly under uh, the inflation of food prices and energy prices at the uh, gas pump. Um, and they are already uh, changing their behavior significantly in response. Um, on the other hand, a second group, uh, which is a more wealthy group of consumers, are the people who have uh, savings accounts in their pension plans and so on. Um, they are now seeing the stock market uh, reversal uh, affecting their wealth and they are also starting to change their behavior now and cut back on expenditures uh, and uh, perhaps uh, in some cases dip into their savings to maintain a lifestyle that they've been accustomed to for a little bit longer. But sooner or later, both of these groups are going to adjust their behavior significantly and there's going to be uh, a slowdown in demand that hopefully is going to bring demand supply back into balance and uh, get inflation back under control. Right. With that being said, do you think that the U.S. Federal Reserve, like many of the central banks, has struck a right balance by tightening the monetary policy while still keeping the economy and labor market going? Well, the Federal Reserve uh, is playing catch up. Uh, obviously, the Federal Reserve made a significant error in believing that the inflation uh, that beset the economy early last year uh, was temporary, transitional, and related to the uh, pandemic. Uh, we now know that there was much more to it than just a few supply chain problems and uh, pandemic-related issues. Uh, it was much more uh, structural and fundamental. And accordingly, it is not proven to be temporary. Fed is playing catch up, but they don't want to play catch up in what looks like a panic mode. So a 75 per basis point increase uh, seems to me to be about right. Uh, some doves were arguing for 50 basis points, some hawks for 100. They've split the difference at 75, and they've already uh, built into market expectations, as your correspondent indicated, the notion that there'll be another 75 basis point increase uh, in July. Uh, and after that, I think they hope to go back to 25 basis point increases uh, until uh, they bring the Fed, bring the inflation situation under control. We will only know if they've done that when there are, say, three or four consecutive months of lower inflation. Right. You mentioned the pandemic, like there are various other external factors like the war in Ukraine, which you just mentioned, which has led to surge in fuel prices in the United States. My last question to you is that moving ahead, what might protect households and businesses in the United States? Well, ju just uh, on the Ukraine front for a moment, it's, it's not just energy prices, of course, but uh, food prices in particular have also been affected uh, by the uh, supply shortages in Ukraine. Uh, now, going forward, uh, households, consumers are actually very smart in terms of adjusting their behavior according to uh, economic circumstances. So uh, we do expect to see a slowdown in the uh, housing market as mortgage rates uh, rise. We expect to see a slowdown in the automobile market as uh, uh, interest rates on automobile loans rise. And throughout the economy, there's going to be this uh, slowdown in the purchases of high ticket items. Uh, what's going to be interesting to look at is whether or not the service sector uh, continues to hold up. 
We're seeing very strong demand for travel and tourism in the U.S. this summer due to pent up demand after uh, the COVID restrictions have been lifted. Uh, the question is, how long will that sustain itself before consumers start cutting back also on their consumption of services as well? Right. Thanks, John, for getting us up to speed on this. We will, of course, be tracking this throughout the day.